Hey guys, uh, gonna take you guys on a tour of my house. This is the Charles S. Brown house. He was a manufacturer of woodworking machinery um, from like 1890s up to about uh, 1930s-ish. Um, still covered today, lots of the tools are still around, people still use them. But uh, let me take you on a tour of his house. So here we have the entryway, which these doors here are not original, but this door and this set actually is original to the house. We have the transom up there, which is really cool. All the woodwork in here is still pretty nice and together. Yeah, and we also have the original tiles, which are probably hand painted and really, really nice and really cool. So we're gonna have to bring that back because we're missing a few up here. So we'll be figuring that out here at some point. So let me take you guys inside. So yeah, here is the entryway. Um, we have uh, this really awesome chandelier here, which is original to the house. Um, we have the gas fixtures here and the electrical here. There would have been quite a bit more crystal on it at one point, but of course we've lost a lot of it over the era, but the fact that it's still here at all is still pretty awesome. We have a little like cove here, where you probably would have had like, you know, your um, hat rack, coat rack, maybe a place to put your shoes. We also have uh, the staircase here, which unfortunately is missing its newel post here at the front, but we actually are in contact with a guy who has some of Mr. Brown's, the guy who built the house, uh, his machinery, who's going to go ahead and remake us a newel post for this area, which we think is kind of perfect for the house. Um, we do have some really nice um, woodwork in here, which we think is actually only in this house. We have these little like posts and bits up every, or these little circular woodwork details. And uh, I mean, I don't even know how to necessarily describe it. It's just really pretty and cool. And I've not seen anything like it in this city or another. So we also have these gigantic pocket doors, uh, three of which work, two of which do not or three of which do not, because there are three sets of them. Um, this is one that actually rolls pretty nicely, or the set that rolls pretty nicely, but you can see a little bit of noise, but considering they're 131 years old, can't complain too very much. Um, here in the parlor, we are unfortunately missing the two matching fireplaces for this parlor and for this parlor over here, um, which is unfortunate, but we, we, we will find something that works for them eventually. Um, so this is the main bay of windows in the front and these are pretty unique and cool because the shutters are actually built into the windows. So if it's too sunny out for you, you just pull the shutters, pull them, close them up. And you can let in a little less light or no light at all pretty much. And every single one of these windows has that, which we think is a pretty awesome feature. I do have my uh, little pump organ here that I purchased not too long ago. It works, it's really cool, and I think it really fits the aesthetic of the house. We also do have these really cool medallions in here with these kind of angular shape. And uh, of course, we're going to repair and eventually paint and maybe even gild these in gold, which we think, you know, would be pretty awesome. <laughs> Give it some opulence to the house that it deserves. Um, also have the inlaid floors in the second parlor. Don't have it on this side. But right here we have these inlays and really pretty design. And there's really nothing wrong with it other than a tiny little piece missing here and there. They're pretty much in perfect shape. So, and then of course, yes, we are missing this fireplace here as well, which we're not terribly happy about, but you can't win them all. We do have four other fireplaces in the house that are still here. So there would have been six in total. We're just happy to be missing the front two ones. So, you know, the windows, the woodwork, all the plaster work, again, with the medallion up here. Uh, yeah, pretty, pretty awesome stuff in this house. So, let me recenter you guys. Cool. So, coming out of uh, the third set of pocket doors, so one, two, and then here is the third one. We have back into the stair, stairwell slash hallway which is really just pretty cool. The other nice thing about this area is the fact that because these stairs are floating, you can actually look all the way up to the third floor, which is pretty cool. If you need to yell down at somebody, hey, I need laundry, or hey, I need you to come down and do whatever, you can totally do that, which is really cool. 
So heading back into this area, we have kind of the half maids, half um, dining room kind of air, you know area still. We still have some of the really nice woodwork here. Um, this is the maid stairwell behind this door here. Pretty dark back here. You know, they don't really care, I guess, if the, if the mates could see if they were walking up the stairs. But these are really tight and narrow, but still pretty cool. Uh, we're definitely not going to lose that area. We're going to keep it because it's still a part of the house that we want to show off. Um, we have a bathroom that we believe was originally a pantry. And I, I do apologize for lighting it here because simply put, the electric in this place isn't uh, super great at the moment. So we don't really have any lights to turn on, but you can see in here pretty good right now. This was probably like a 1920s-esque era when they put this in, and we think they took out the pantry to do this. Um, which I guess makes sense considering the house at that point probably only had one bathroom in total for a 3,700 square foot house, which is not enough, <laughs> at least by modern standards. We have the hallway here, which I mean, still ceiling is really tall here. Um, you can see a little bit of damage there from just age and water and everything like that. Here we have the kitchen. Now, of course, this is not a very big kitchen because Victorians did not have very big kitchens. And we're going to keep it that way. Um, we uh, have done a little bit of work into this room. Simply put, it was 70s out. It needs to be taken back to the 1880s. And uh, the plaster was really starting to fail in this room and I needed access to the electrical wires back here so I could rerun a lot of this system because the entire house is knob and post and that just doesn't fly anymore and I do not think it will pass code. Uh, we also did find the original wainscoting, or not wainscoting, the original uh, beadboard in here which was hidden behind here so we know that this is what it would have originally looked like and so we're going to bring it back in the whole room. There's actually a place to nail it in on these boards here and so we know the whole room had it. So we're able to just dissect that by just tearing it a little bit up. We also found these little shelves here and we would have believed that this would have been the door for the um, pantry um, that is now the bathroom. Uh, but somebody at some point put these little shelves in there which are kind of cool and fascinating. Didn't expect to find that. So entering from the way the maids would have come into the dining room. This little door here is a double hinge door. So you would push it open, you could push it both ways. So easier to get with foods and plates and stuff um, in and out of the dining room. So here, let's go ahead and pop this open, push on in. Now this is one of the more grand rooms on the first floor, uh, mostly because it does have uh, the original wainscoting, which is really cool and pretty nice and really in good shape. Again, especially considering its age, we have the original radiators in here like we do through most of the house, which are pretty ornate. We also have one of the original, the only original fireplace actually on the first floor um, with the original tiles. Uh, it's really nice and carved and, and really ornate, but you have to get pretty close to see a lot of the detail. But there you go there, the grill is really nice. And then of course the tiles here are just awesome. So, and then we do have um, a lot of good plaster work in this room as well. We think the medallion in here is something pretty special because it has grapes and fruit and food to specify that you are in the dining room. And we just find that really kind of cool that they even thought about that to put the detail in to signify what the room was for. Um, we do have this really cool uh, china cabinet over here, a built-in, that has the original push button switch and electrics and it all still works, all the light bulbs, everything. And it's just really a pretty little piece. It's uh, got some mirrors in there, so if you point it in the right way, it kind of looks like an infinity room, but it's pretty cool. All right, guys, so that's the tour of the first floor. Let me go ahead and take you up to the second and third floors, and we'll continue the tour there. So, coming back into the hallway, we have the stairs. As you can see up, it's pretty cool. I think I showed this earlier, but just in case you missed it. Let's head on up. So digging in the walls a little bit, we actually discovered that there's a little bit of the original wallpaper up here. We might try to have this remade if I can get enough of it uncovered. I think I might have to bring a steamer in and see if I can pull some more of this paint because that's a really pretty pattern. Wouldn't that look awesome here in the, in the stairwell? At least I think it would. <laughs> so continuing on. These two doors down here are the two uh, main bedrooms of the house, or at least the more ornate ones. 
Um, but before we get to those, I would like to show off this. This is actually one of the original panel boxes. So this is electrical. I haven't ever seen anything quite like it. It actually predates fuses and is on um, a slate board so it doesn't burn. But um, yeah, we're gonna keep that there. We're not going to use it for electrical, but it's pretty cool looking. And uh, yeah, we might frame it out. So let's go to the master bedroom first. So first thing you come in, you see like the, obviously the big bay of windows here, cause this is right above the first parlor in the front of the house. And then we have this beautiful fireplace here with the original tiles, which are just gorgeous. <clears throat> Amazing that they're all still here. And then we only have a few right here that are cracked. Um, and of course the fireplace is carved itself too. So you have these really beautiful little motifs carved in there. Yeah, I think it's really cool. Somewhat hard to see on camera, I suppose, but you can kind of still see them in there. It's just really pretty. So that's that. Um, and of course the bay of windows, these have like the really beautiful woodwork. It's probably easier to see here, so it's not so backlit. But just like downstairs, it's the same style of woodwork. It's really beautiful. And most of the house has that, or at least most of the prettier areas. And we have this little cove over here as well, which I don't know what that would have been, like maybe a little sitting room addition to the kitchen or to the uh, bedroom here. Um, we're not sure we're gonna do that, if we're gonna put the bed there or, or what, but we'll do something pretty nifty. We also have the original radiator here, which is pretty cool. We're trying to get this system back online right now. Um, we're having a little bit of trouble with it, but you know, that's just how, you know, he do with these houses. We also have the transoms here, which people seem to really enjoy. Uh, and they actually all work, which is really cool. I can actually show you on this one here. If I come into the second large room, the hardware is here and you would just unscrew this bit here and pull this up and down and screw it back in and lock it. And that is the whole system for the transoms. And like I said, they all still work, or at least every one that I've seen so far works. Um, so this is the second big bedroom on the second floor. The medallions in here, which are super nice. The master bedroom has one too, but it isn't cracked. We might have to replace this one because the ceiling in here as well. It's not doing the best. It's kind of pulling over there in the corner. We have another fireplace over here. I believe this is granite, just like the other one. Same stone, little carved motifs, really pretty. Uh, one thing unfortunate here is somebody has taken our tile, so that's all missing, but you know, you win some, you lose some. Um, and this one also is kind of unique because this here is a regular window, right? But this guy over here is what they call a Jefferson window. So it runs floor to ceiling and you can actually open it up and there would be a deck out here. Now currently we are missing the deck because I had to have tuck pointers take it out to be able to get to the problem area that was above us uh, and relay the bricks there. But at some point we will build the deck back here. You can see the holes for it and everything where to line and put like a nice chair out there. And uh, our concept right now is to actually have this room here and the room that we came through right here, the master, as two rentable rooms, maybe Airbnb or whatever, or for guest rooms, uh, and turn the third floor itself entirely into our master suite. Um, you know, looking back into the stair stairwell, which is so pretty. Okay, on to the maids area. Um, and we know that because this is the top of the maids stairwell here. So, you know, kind of narrow and tight, bendy, but it comes right down there by the kitchen. And then, you know, looking up, here's the, the stairwell again, the two rooms. And also the woodwork does change here quite a bit. So even though we have the transoms and everything, you can see it turns normal rosettes and things like that are at least more common woodwork versus if you turn the corner and look back up, you can see the more beautiful ornate woodwork up there. So let's continue on here. This is the one original bathroom I believe was in the house. Um, of course, I think the second owner remodeled this in the teens or the twenties because this is more of an art deco aesthetic than maybe Victorian. So we might move this stuff upstairs because we're kind of going to go a little art deco on the third floor. Uh, but everything else down here is going back Victorian. Even has the original painted, unfortunately, but we'll, we'll sandblast this guy. Um, radiator. Uh, a nice little cute closet. So if you need to put your things away. All right, continuing on. We have the actual 
maid's room, or at least what we believe would have been the maid's room. Uh, nothing too super fancy here. We do, of course, have a little bit of water damage. Um, there's areas of the house, especially ones that meet to the roof that have more damage than the others. And the floor is nothing to write home about here. It's all gonna have to come out. Um, this is right above the kitchen, actually. So well, a lot of the walls have to come out here just for wiring purposes anyways. So let's go in here. And again, with the transoms, every door in this, on the second floor has a transom above it. Um, this room, we're not exactly for sure what it was because it does have the fireplace, it does have the back bay to it, and it does go back to the really nice woodwork again, which the maid wouldn't probably have had in her room, so we're not sure exactly what this was for or how it connected to like the normal spaces. And unfortunately, it is all painted back here, which, yeah, you know, I guess you can't win them all again. Um, so, but yeah, nice big windows in this room. And we do have, of course, more water damage up here. Um, most of this stuff we've kind of ripped down ourselves. It's not like it's just fallen, but uh, we did have, a, have to have a lot of buckets back here catching all of the water, which is unfortunate, but the new roof goes on next week, so can't complain. Um, this fireplace too, I originally thought it was wood and nothing special, but turns out it's actually stone. So beneath this, we think there might be stenciled paint. And so I have to be very careful, get a heat gun out and try to scrape the paint off of this and see if I can reveal those original painted bits. If there is any to find, of course, but it's worth at least a search. All right, so let's head here back now to, to the uh, stairwell and I'll take you all to the third floor which I love this area. The lighting in this area is just spectacular all the time. And, and no, there's no lights on in this building at all currently. <laughs> all the power's kind of messed up because a lot of it's 131 years old. So let's head on up. More random chairs left by the previous owner. You can gotta get a little look at the neighborhood from here. See some of the missing buildings here, 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 here. This neighborhood's kind of been through a lot, but you know, it is what it is. So I'll look back down the stairwell. You see how you could easily just yell or throw something down to somebody down there in the first floor. So in here, this is actually the part where you'd be in the mansard roof. And you can see we've kind of started stripping a lot of that away because we need to look at the roof and find out how good and or bad it was. Luckily, everything this way is dry. Um, there are a few holes where, you know, it's connected to the building like here, and you can see one down here, a little bit of light down that way. And that's just, you know, we're missing parts of the cornice and some other things. And so it's things we have to get built back up and stuff like that again. And then a uh, bird's got in here at one point, built some nests. You know, all the usual fun stuff. But still, it's all saveable, it's all fixable. It's not cheap, but fixable. Um, this is uh, one of the original closets in the house, and there's many closets, but this is the only one we found that was cedar lined. So we imagine they probably kept some more valuable furs and whatever else in here, and it's got the built-ins. It's pretty cool. So we'll definitely be utilizing that. This is the big bedroom up here. There are two, maybe three, if you count the small room next to us. Um, and so, yeah, you can see again where the mansard comes in. Normal brickwork, mansard roof. And you can see the light coming through. It needs to be flashed there again. I mean, the entire roof needs to be redone completely. But luckily, we're getting the flat roof on here soon. But you can, if you ever wonder what the back of a mansard roof looks like, there you go. And then out here at the window, we do actually have a pretty cool view. If you look out this way, you can actually see the St. Louis Gateway Arch right here, which if those not familiar with St. Louis, there's our icon of our city, which we rather enjoy. And then, you know, some of the prettier buildings on my street. Well, hard to see, dirty windows. <laughs> it's a dirty house right now. Okay, so, and of course up here too, we do have the transoms and all the wood up here is beautiful too. I mean, there isn't a piece of woodwork in this house that isn't pretty, which we feel extremely fortunate to have. So into this room, actually this room, uh, this entire area we're going, or this entire floor we're going to turn into our master suite. Um, we're gonna divide this room in half and actually put a bathroom here. 
like what in a, a clawfoot tub right here in this little bay look amazing. Yeah, so that's the plan. We'll, we'll see how long it takes us to get there. Uh, this room too, we've been working on the ceiling, trying to get it out so we can make sure that all the rafters are good for the roof to go. It turns out they're pretty much good to go. So we're gonna get that in and dried. But while doing that, we did find a little friend here, the mummified squirrel, as you can see. Uh, yeah, it turns out, uh, I guess he got into the roof and couldn't get back out, and here he lies, and it's a full-on dried mummy. So that's a first for me. I'm sure it won't be the last goofy thing we find about this house, but, yeah, weird little story there. <laughs> um, all right, so that's pretty much the third floor. I guess I can show you guys the roof real quick. So the f half of the, f the, uh, the house is two stories, and half of it is three stories. And so this is the part that's two stories, and the part we're in right now is the third story, or mansard, as they call it. Um, so eventually, we actually would like to put a deck up here, just like a floating deck, so you could walk out and enjoy these pretty views of the city. We actually have uh, this little white tower here, and this little darker tower here. These are actually both really old water towers that used to supply the city. This one here is the white one, is actually a giant Corinthian column, or Roman, or whatever column. And uh, it's supposedly it's the largest in the world. Uh, so interesting little fact there. And they light it up at night too. It's really pretty. So that's it for the third floor. I'll, uh, I'll meet you guys again back in the basement and show you guys essentially the dungeon. All right, guys. So now back here in the kitchen, uh, I'm going to take you guys to the basement or the dungeon, whichever you'd prefer. <laughs> so this is the stairwell in the kitchen the stairwell to it. There are two other entrances from the outside, and I can show you guys those down here. Again, excuse the lighting, and it'll be a little dark down here. Luckily, we have windows down here that do help a significant amount. So, right underneath the kitchen is was probably like the laundry room at some point when, you know, machines became available. We do have some old beadboard and stuff down here, and uh, a little bit of insanity with pipes and just random stuff. But the windows are pretty cool because they have these old iron iron gates on them and they're actually all still there. So the entire way around we have these guys which are really rad. And then here's one of the back doors. Now entering into this room you'll notice the tile first and foremost. <laughs> That's because this uh, was used by the second owner as actually a vet office. So you would have entered from this door here from the side and uh, he put this fantastic tile down which uh, <laughs> is really strange for a basement. Also, these walls, they're kind of weird. They have like these foam boards on them, or, like fiber boards. Not exactly for sure what they're about, but that's what they are. Kind of looks like a haunted house in here because of it. And then we have these old school cabinets here, built-ins, the little crystal knobs. They've also painted these silver, but we'll probably take all that crap off and turn them back into wood, but they are rather pretty. So continuing on, we do have a little bathroom here, which was probably put in the same time as the tile because the age of that toilet's rather old. And to be honest, we might reuse this somewhere else in the house because it is probably the oldest remaining toilet in the house. So we'll do something with that at some point. Now we come to the radiator, or not radiator, the boiler. So you can see the systems and the pipes going every which way. Uh, we've had this actually looked at. Supposedly, it, pr it should work. It's from 2007, so it's not a terribly old model. And uh, as soon as we can get water to it, we'll test it. Um, we did have to rip out all the, or not rip out, but we had to rip up the street to get a new water line in here because the lines uh, were lead. They were the original lines to the house. Also, it's kind of hard to say or tell, but this basement's actually really tall. It's probably, well, I don't know. I have, I'm. It's hard for me to touch the ceiling. I have to get on my tippy toes to do it. And I'm 5'10", so if that gives any perspective there. Uh, we have this little partition for the basement here, this little wooden uh, beadboard wall. And then, you know, the giant columns holding up the basement. Pretty cool stuff. It's extremely dry down here. It doesn't look there has ever been water damage or anything down here like that. Uh, we have this little kind of like root celery room here. This is the front of the house. Um, you know, not a whole lot going on in here, but dry, pretty, lots of storage space or whatever else you want to do down here if you want to put a speakeasy. <laughs> um, 
This is the water line that cost a fortune to bring in. But of course, as you can see, it's not lead, it's copper. So this was an exciting moment for us to get this in here because it means we have at least some water. So as you can see, it works. Yeah, I know it's on the basement floor, but it's not gonna hurt anything. And then here we have this little, I don't know, just random little room, super duper dungeony. Creepy. Yeah, super creepy. But uh, yeah, it seems to work pretty good. Uh, weird glass dome thing. I don't know what that was from, but it's here, so it's ours. We're keeping it. So essentially that's the basement. Um, yeah, I mean, maybe not as dark and dungeony as most basements because there is so much light because of these windows. Um, and like I said, again, these, these uh, wooden or iron bars are really just nice. They're so cool. And no, not all of them, all the windows have them. So guys, that's pretty much the tour of the house. Uh, you've seen the messes, you've seen the beautiful woodwork, you've seen all the other goofy things, and you've even heard a few of the ideas of what we have going on here. Uh, our plan is to make this a perfect Victorian home again. Uh, we want to see this place shine. We don't want to use any white paint anywhere. We want to put the original wallpaper back where we can and the details back where they are. That way this house can live on as what it always was. So that's the concept. That's the plan. That's the tour. And I hope you guys will join us along for this journey of uh, making this place a great home again.